come to the final branch of our triangular research method and this is the participate or do branch All right. and this is really where you get into the shoes of the individual and do the work with them so if you're designing a kitchen you are going to get in the kitchen you're going to cook if you're designing a race car that's what you're going to do you're going to get in the car and you're going to feel the g-forces if you're designing a phone etc etc if you're designing a service you actually go and you call the service center and you work through the process um, as you participate in interacting with um, the call center their marketing material their products and their services that they present online all of these are what would fit under the participatory branch of research and really what you're trying to do here is simulate um, what is a customer is experiencing as well so and what you remember what you're trying to do is you're trying to identify your workarounds so remember in the previous module we spoke about errors and they were of type slips and mistakes and also we spoke about hidden factories and workarounds well this means that you're actually in a better position to identify those workarounds because in order for you to get the job done you're you're asking yourself continually well hold on why am i doing it this way um, and you really got to get out of the view of accepting the way things are done just because somebody has told you that's the way it's done okay so in replicating what somebody else does you must make the assumption that you're questioning what they're actually doing because you bring a new and fresh mind to it so don't just take their imprint upon your actions you're trying to actually not take their imprint you're trying to rather understand why are they doing it that way right. so you know yes you can replicate those conditions as much as you can but ultimately that's what you're trying to do you're trying to actually find all right what are the workarounds and things that um, are causing this individual to think the way he or she is thinking all right once again empathy is high on the scale here as you get into this person's shoes and you begin to do their daily chores um, so for example on the um, uh, month end procedure example we um, basically did a month in role as though we were one of the executives and we interacted with all the teams and understood the headaches that executives had with the example of the aerospace client we went out to lunch with the individuals and sat down at lunch with them and be part of their conversation and interacted with them at a high empathy level one of the techniques you can use is a service safari um, and all this really means is that you're going to go out and you're going to try and understand what's happening out in the market and you're going to participate in those activities so you're going to possibly go to competitors and you're going to even peruse competitor websites or products and acquire those products and services and then figure out how you can, can participate in you know working through their store and buying products and how that can affect how you help customers move through your stores yeah or the services that you provide um, so r this is really what the service safari is all about and bearing in mind you must arrive with your five human factors that you're going to consider Remember we spoke about you know, societal, organizational, um, team-based sort of factors, all the rest of those pieces that I introduced in another module. All right, So these are the, the factors that we want to be able to categorize our experiences in when we go on a service safari. Another technique is role-playing. So for example, in the ambulance environment, this means going out with either with the um, ambulance crews or mimicking the process of arriving at a scene and interacting with somebody who needs to be resuscitated on the ground so that you can understand the pressure you can understand the need to do certain things and have certain things that readily available that you need in order to resuscitate this person so often there are simulation exercises very similar to body storming which will occur much later in the ideation space and also storyboarding which will occur even further but okay but these things are they can identify new things to you but especially when it has to do with human body movement and how bodies move through time and space um, and you know we can really ask the questions of why are they doing it that way 
And we see this in the, so the Toyota way around the Kaizen technique, techniques in production floor management and all the rest of it around movement of material and people around the shop floor and reducing that. Um, and really the only way to do that effectively is through role playing. Now, um, yeah, classic example, well, not quite that classic, um, but really about you know, what type of insight can we get from going to a hotel room and uh, having a shower. And, um, you know, this is something that you're actually not observing somebody else do, hopefully not, um, but you're participating and you're going into the shower and you're realizing that you're using this um, particular toilet seat for other purposes. Um, and, you know, this is going to cause you to ask questions. And as a designer, you're going to see this more and more often. Wherever you go, you're going to interact with these types of objects. And this is a second order type of problem, a person to object. You know, why is it happening? You know, can this not be done in a better way? All the rest of it, you're going to find, once you have the designer lens, you're going to be asking your qu these questions continually, okay? So, you know, what is this? What is it designed for? Why is it used this way? What else can this be used for? How can we change it? Practice, like a muscle, you're practicing that part of your uh, um, thought pattern continually so that you can um, um, sharpen that um, design skills that you have. All right, so, you know, very short module. Um, I would uh, advise you to team up and go and do some participatory research. Perhaps go into one of your competitors' branches or stores um, and interact with their service. Um, possibly some of your competitors' products. You know, you can figure out how they work and and or um, interact with a factory floor. You can go and visit certain factory floors to see how things could be done better on, let's, for example, an information factory that exists in your organization, how you can move information more effectively through your business. Well, go and see a proper supply chain. Go and work through a factory to see how years and years of Kanban and Kaizen and Lean and Six Sigma have optimized those processes and how can you then apply that back into your optimized information flow in your organization. So anyway, there's a few examples and uh, go forth and conquer. Or should I say, go forth and participate. See you soon.